The anti-Semitism crisis in Australia seems to be getting worse with each passing day. Prime Minister Anthony Albanese did not put the rising threat of violence against Jewish people and the lack of social cohesion on our streets on the agenda of his national cabinet last week, despite Peter Dutton repeatedly urging him to do so. Nor in Albanese's column in The Australian Today did he make any mention of how his government was going to help protect Australian Jews, including vulnerable children, from attack when he was outlining his plans for next year? He's deliberately turning a blind eye to the explosion in racism that's happening under his watch. Foreign Minister Penny Wong is finally making a trip to Israel soon, but she's practically tripping over herself to mention that she'll be visiting the West Bank and neighbouring countries as well as being part of a peace mission to bring an end to the war. And so as Penny Wong keeps lecturing Israel about military tactics, the Albanese government turns away from what's happening in its own country where it is actually responsible. And we saw yet another weekend of pro-Palestinian marches in our major cities. 5,000 people turned up in Melbourne, chanting all the usual anti-Semitic chants that we hear at these protests. 6,500 people turned up in Sydney with signs demanding the end of Israeli occupation. Well, here are some of the Melbourne protesters openly calling for the end of Israel. I mean, calling for an intifada, calling for from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. As you know, these phrases openly call for the destruction of the Jewish state and it's a clear appeal for the genocide of Jewish people. Now, this isn't just happening in Australia. As we spoke about last week, protests demanding genocide of Jews are being heard across the US too. And we showed you the footage inside the University of Pennsylvania. Like our Prime Minister, their university president also didn't think there was anything wrong with these chants. I mean, in Australia, no one is stopping these protests from happening. But finally, in the US, action was taken over the weekend. The president of UPenn, Liz McGill, resigned from her position. She said, finally, that words do matter. We haven't heard yet whether the presidents of the other two universities including Harvard, are going to fall on their swords for their appalling testimony at Congress as well, where they all failed to say that calling for the genocide of Jews was against the university's code of conduct, against their harassment policies. Well, clearly, Jews were no longer feeling safe on their campuses. Now, the Australian's editor-at-chief, editor-at-large, rather, Paul Kelly, wrote a very important column on the weekend about this hypocrisy, this moral failure of the position that the left has taken. And it applies to whether it's politicians of the left or universities or even the arts. He wrote, and I quote, the left is making a fatal moral mistake in embracing the Palestinian cause when it can't disentangle that cause from the violence intrinsic to the identity and meaning of Hamas as seen in its assault of October 7. And Paul Kelly quoted the New York University journalism professor Susie Linfield, who said that the Western left's response to October 7 will be viewed as a moment of moral corruption, on par with the defence of Stalin's purges, Czechoslovakia's anti-Semitic show trials of 1952, the Soviet invasions of Hungary and Czechoslovakia, and Poland's anti-Semitic expulsions of 1968, along with the denial of the Khmer Rouge's genocide and the adulation of China's vicious cultural revolution. Linfield wrote, a left that is fixated on decolonization mistakes a death cult for a liberation movement and is unable to recognize a bloodbath, even one that was filmed and publicized worldwide by the killers themselves. Paul Kelly also writes in his piece that Australian multiculturalism is going to face an examination of its character despite the near deafening silence from most of its alleged champions. 
and Albanese's silence is the loudest of them all.